What do we got this morning? The Wonderful Cross. All right. And Emmanuel. All right. We'll start with a couple songs. Welcome to worship. <laughs>
let us begin our worship with time for reflection. I invite you to stand as you are able. God, you are the one who leads us. Yes, O oh God. God, you are the one who blesses us. Bless us, O oh God. God, you are the one who lifts us when we call. Lift us, O oh God. God, you are the one we praise and worship. We praise you, O oh God. Come, let us worship you. And as we do, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Lord of all, we get so focused on ourselves sometimes that we do not see the beauty and the hope that is in front of us. We all face certain hardships in our lives, and we do not always ask for help or guidance from you. O oh God, help us and guide us in our hardships and selfish ways as only you can. Remind us that we are not alone in our fear or frustration, because you are our continued help and stronghold. Help us to receive your love and grace. Amen. And know this, children of God, you are loved, you are worthy, you are forgiven of all your sins. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Giver of every breath I breathe, author of all eternity, giver of every perfect thing, to you be the glory, maker of heaven and of earth, no one can comprehend your work.
Our scripture reading is from Mark chapter 13, verses 1 through 8. As Jesus came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. <clears throat> when he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will this be? And what will be the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still, no, still to come. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. But this is but the beginning of the birth pangs. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Thank you, Brenda. In my original thoughts today and theme for life change, I was planning to speak a little bit about the theme of how we are all in a great time of change in our culture, in our families, in our church, and how that the vision of God that God lays out before us has always been about changing of the status quo, has always been about changing what we've expected in our relationships with Jesus, and then in that change, God brings a life change to us with new opportunities, new acts of grace, and forgiveness that we have never imagined before. And that the vision of stones falling and nations fighting is not a vision of death, but rather a vision of life. And then on Friday, violence erupted in the city of Paris, and that topic and that theme just didn't quite seem to be right for the day. And so I wanted to change a little, change and think a little bit more about those events. And we were reminded that on Friday of how, how life can change in a different way, but in a moment. And in doing some reflecting upon this past week, I came across some words by author and novelist Anne Lamont, and she wrote some words, um, and she was referring to what was helpful after the Sandy Hook elementary school shootings of a few years ago, and in her remembrance of that, she shared these words um, this past week. She said, what was helpful was that we stuck together in our horror, in our grief, in our anxiety, and in our cluelessness. We grieved, we feared, we despaired, we raged and prayed, and we reached out for any help at all. And these were appropriate responses. And I am going to recommend, she says, that we do that today and the next day and the days that follow. And I was struck by her words and how she said, we all stuck together together even in the midst of our despair. And it's good to be reminded to do that. Now, after hearing the news from Paris a couple days ago, I know I began to wonder, and I think many of us all did, especially after hearing these, this powerful gospel text today in which Jesus is referencing signs that are to come, things that are yet to happen, and we, we kind of wonder, is he pointing to something that is the end or the beginning, and it's, it's hard to discern. But I was thinking about these words, and I began to wonder, when Jesus says the words, not one stone will be left upon another, that all will be thrown down, are the events of the last couple of days part of that statement? Or is the increase and escalation of terror in our world what Jesus is referring to when he says, nation will rise up against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes, there will be famine. 
And then the last line of our gospel text today rings especially loud after this, after this week when Jesus says, this will be but the beginning of the birth pangs. And I ask myself, and I begin to wonder, what does that mean something is going to come next? What will be the next event? Or when our kids ask us, questions this week when they hear the news of Paris and they ask, do I need to be concerned that something like this could happen here? And we wonder with them. And of course, we reassure one another, but it is a reminder to stay vigilant with one another in our homes, in our communities, in our places that we gather. The questions today that are posed by Peter and James, John and Andrew, the questions that they asked to Jesus in our text, what and when? What will be the sign? When will it be? That's, that's kind of our question today, in a sense. Is this a sign or is this not a sign? These questions have been asked throughout of all of our history after other events, whether it be war natural disasters, terror, tragedies. I know we asked them during the great wars of the 20th century. We asked them after the genocides of the Holocaust, of Rwanda, of Bosnia, of others. We asked them after September 11, 2001. We asked them after the shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary School and other devastating days. We asked them after something happens in our own life and family. We ask them again today. And I ask it again today, not so much because the tragedy of Paris is so much worse than anything else. It's not, unfortunately. And it's not because it was the only event that even happened this past week. There were terror events, bombings, killings in Beirut, Iraq, Syria, other places just this week. But there's something about this one. Maybe it's because it gives us a sense that this might mean something bigger yet to come. And that the nations of this world may be forced into a war, into a battle that none of us wanted to fight. And like all birth pangs, when those, the birthing process starts, once those things start, there's nothing that you can do to stop it. When an expected mother goes into labor, she can't say, nope, I don't want to do this. It, it, you, you, are destined, you are destined for what is to happen. And maybe that's why I feel a little helpless this morning when I reflect on this, because sometimes it feels like my prayers and my yearning for peace in this world. It's just not going to happen right now. It's not going to be possible because more war seems inevitable and there's nothing we can do to stop it. But we have to trust in our elected leaders, in our military leaders, not only in our country but around this world, to make the right decisions. And I trust that they will. But when we think about birth pangs, I think we also must remember that birth pangs, no matter if it's just the birth of a child or the birth of something new in our world and culture and time, that it brings new life. It is like a key opening a door to a new day when the darkness of our and starkness of our current day needs to be opened up to something new and new possibilities. And that new life, like a baby, it's messy. It makes a lot of noise and it needs lots of care. And we don't know how it's going to turn out in the long run, but we feed it and we diaper it and we train it, and we 
nurture it and we surround it with good things, but we know there will come a day when we have to let it go and make its own decisions. You can't tell that I got a senior in my house who's <laughs> ready, getting ready to, to move on. So how do we nurture this new life after Paris? Even when maybe we feel the inevitability of war that is to come. I want to share with you a few more words by Anne Lamont. She writes, So after an appropriate time of being stunned in despair, we show up. We ask God for help. And we do the next right thing. We buy or cook a bunch of food for the local homeless. We return phone calls. We return library books. We smile at those who pass us on the street. We reach out to our neighbors who need our help and our care. We surround one another with support. We make eye contact with others. We go to the market. We help out and we show patience to those people who annoy us. In the face of human tragedy, we go around the neighborhood and we pick up litter, even though we know there will be more litter tomorrow. These are blessed sacraments in our life. <coughs> Excuse me. We take action, and in that action we are led to a new insight that while maybe we are powerless in certain situations, we are never helpless. In my own reflection, I know that when I get caught up, to use these words or this image of Jesus, when I get caught up in the stones of our great buildings crumbling, and by that I mean those things that we count on in our life, those things that have always been there, the the way we think things need and should be. And we get caught up in these stones, our pillars of life and faith and what we think was normal, crumbling around us or, or changing dramatically. God always shows up and reminds me. Sometimes that reminder comes through the words of others. Sometimes through a new day or a sense of a new season. Sometimes through an unplanned circumstance. Sometimes through experiences that I could not have foreseen or things that I even tried to avoid. But God shows up with amazing new grace and new life that only Christ can bring. And I am reminded to be hopeful. I am reminded that I am not helpless I am reminded that God holds me in that hand and nothing can take it away. I am reminded that God frees me from the power of death, the power of despair, and brings new life, whether it's messy or looks nothing like the old life. And in that, I have to take a lot of baby steps. And sometimes that means I stumble and I fall down and I make mistakes. But new life comes. <clears throat> new life comes to our church, to our families, to Paris, and to us. So my friends, take these words from Christ today. Walk not in fear of falling stones and pangs of birth, but rather walk in courage. Walk with others of great courage when maybe you don't have it yourself, and let them carry you through. For life can change in a moment. But Jesus Christ has changed our life because of his work in our lives and the promise of his love and grace. We can have hope in all of our powerless moments. For that love and grace, we say thanks be to God. Amen. We have a good song in front of us. Blessed be your name. Let's stand, let's sing together.
be seated as our service continues with our prayers of the people. As we pray today, we especially, especially remember a number of people for whom we pray each day. A few updates on some of those people for whom we pray. Charlene Peterson is now a resident at Norseland Care Center here in Westby. Audrey Nelson is at Bethel Home receiving some care uh, following a hip replacement surgery. Martin Chelland and Cal Anderson are both hospitalized at Gunderson Hospital in La Crosse. Sam Bakastun is home following a hospitalization this week. Suzanne Hansen is uh, residing at Bland Beckadall Center for Hospice where she is receiving some respite care and her family is discerning next steps in her care. We also pray for Harlan Stuve, who is the, the uncle of Katie Harris. Harlan was recently diagnosed with cancer. We also remember, continue to remember in our prayers Joanne Hoven and Gary Burris, both of our members who are receiving stem cell transplants at University of Wisconsin Madison Hospital. Uh, we plan, one of us plans to see both of them on Wednesday. Uh, Joanne is having expected ups and downs following her transplant, but we understand the latest news was that her white cell count, which needs to increase following her stem cell transplant, is increasing. So that's just a, a glorious word. Gary Burris is receiving his stem cells on Tuesday, so they're in different, uh, different days of the same process, and our prayers continue. We pray for the family and friends of Gerald Bott. Gerald is a brother to Betty Stolison. Uh, Gerald died this past week. His funeral was Wednesday on Veterans Day. Let us pray. We are united into one by the power of the Holy Spirit. Together we pray with all of God's saints for healing, for wholeness, and peace upon the earth. Each of the petitions will end with the words, let us pray, I invite you to pray with me. Have mercy, O God. Holy One, we pray for healing and courage. We pray for forgiveness. We pray for mercy. <clears throat> to fall upon our hearts, upon this globe. Let us pray. We pray, Lord Jesus, for political refugees, for all who seek asylum, for war-torn nations and our global neighbors who are now accustomed to the sound of bombs and gunfire. We pray, Lord, for your peace to settle as only it can upon this war-torn globe. The events of Paris have reminded us of all that happens each day around the globe, people who live in fear, people who live and endure war. We pray, Lord Jesus, for the people of Beirut and Iraq, Syria, Paris, Kenya, and all who grieve with them around the globe. Let us be messengers of your courageous and radical peace. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we pray for people who are living with disease. Today we especially remember those who live with Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, and cancer. We pray for the family, friends, and caregivers who love them, for all who cannot afford medical care when they are sick, for those who are courageously undergoing treatment in the opportunity of a new day or awaiting healing, let us pray. Mercy, oh God. We pray for new parents and grandparents, for families who grieve a miscarriage, for foster parents and homeless youth, for families who live with domestic violence or fear thereof. We pray for those who are newly married, recently divorced, and happily single, we pray for all your children. Let us pray. Mercy, o God. 
In thanksgiving for all the faithful departed who now sing your glory, especially Gerald Bott, that our voices might join with theirs in praise today and always. Let us pray. Into your care, Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, we entrust all for whom we pray, including ourselves. Be with us now and always, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. And our service continues with the offering. At this time, we invite our children to come forward to receive cups for the noisy offering, which this month goes to Bethel Boutique or our Shepherd Fund. I can't always remember. Shepherd Fund? Bethel Boutique this month. Shepherd Fund in December. Thank you. Bethel Boutique. Thank you. Welcome to God's table. As we gather at God's table, we come from many places, differing in age, differing in race, differing in orientation, politics, and tradition. As we come together around the table, we discover that our differences are not something we tolerate, but that our differences are indeed a blessing. The more difference we bring, the more fully we experience the presence of the sacred in our midst. Together we remember that in that sacred night, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, Jesus took the cup and he gave it for all people to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. <clears throat> Together we pray. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Bless this bread and bless this fruit of the vine. Bless all of us in our eating and drinking, that our eyes might be open, that we might recognize the risen Christ in our midst, indeed in one another. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. So come just as you are, wherever you are in this journey of life, you are welcome here. Here we are all one in Christ. Amen. As you are able, I invite you to stand to receive the blessing. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the sign of his cross upon your brow, which you have now received, strengthen you and keep you in his grace unto everlasting life in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And in this new week to come and always, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. And the band sends us out. Lord be with you always. Please share the signs of Christ's peace as you leave today.